Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Barron, and let's talk more about employee motivation with a focus on expectancy theory. Expectancy theory is one of many theories that helps us understand how people think and why they behave as they do at work. Expectancy theory helps us understand the thought process behind how people choose to behave at work, and there are a few key principles that we can understand to get us started with expectancy theory. First, people want to maximize pleasure and minimize pain. Second, human behavior is rational. People's behavior results from conscious choices among alternatives that they weigh equally and they have complete information about these alternatives. Furthermore, they choose the alternative that has the greatest force. And so, we can think of it this way, that our motivational force is a function of three things. First, it's a function of our expectancy, or what we also can refer to as our effort to performance expectancy, times our instrumentality, also known as the performance to outcome expectancy, times the valence or the value that we place on some particular outcome. We're going to use this type of formula to work through what expectancy theory helps us understand. So to further unpack expectancy theory, let's think about the chain of events that occur in the course of trying to get something that you value, some outcome that you value as part of your work. Well, first of all, there is some sort of effort that needs to be exerted. That effort, you hope, will allow you to achieve some level of performance, allow you to behave in some sort of way. Behaving in that so sort of way, one hopes, will allow you to achieve an outcome. So expectancy theory looks at human behavior at work in this way and suggests that there are two types of expectancies that we develop, certain types of probabilities that we come up with in our heads. The first one occurs right here, and this is called the effort, or E, to performance, or P, expectancy. And this is an individual's perception that his or her effort will result in a particular level of performance. So you can think of it as a probability from 0 to 1. So if I try really hard, am I actually going to reach this goal? So maybe in an academic course, if I study really hard, am I going to actually do well on that test? That's the E to P expectancy. The second expectancy occurs right here, and this is the perform performance or P to outcome expectancy, the P to O expectancy. So this suggests that we come up with some sort of probability in our heads, thinking about whether or not we achieve that level of performance. Is that going to get us something that we value? So if I do work really hard and I'm studying for a test and I do well on the test, is that going to get me an A in the course? Or does it not matter at all? Now, the final thing that we have to consider when we talk about expectancy theory are these outcomes. And all of these different outcomes that can occur based upon one's performance have different levels of value that we associate with them. And that value in expectancy theory is what we call the valence. The valence that we associate with that outcome. Now the potential outcomes that we can have based upon some level of performance at work can take a lot of different forms and we can value them in a number of different ways. So let's think about the different types of outcomes you can get for your effort at work. One of them might be pay. One of them might be promotion maybe praise or recognition from a supervisor or from others, or maybe even something negative like coworker ridicule if you perform really well or really poorly on something. Now, the, all of these different outcomes, all these different potential outcomes, there could be others, training opportunities, for example, all of these different outcomes can be valued in three different ways. We may see them as positive, I would really prefer to have one of these outcomes. They may be negative. I would prefer not 
to have that outcome, or it might be neutral in that I don't really care about that outcome. So earlier I talked about how one's motivational force was a function of one's expectancy, instrumentality, and valence. Instrumentality is just another phrase that's sometimes used for a performance to outcome expectancy. So again, think about it this way. One's motivational force is equal to one's E to P expectancy, we'll just call that expectancy, times one's P to O expectancy, and then again, that's just the same thing as one's instrumentality, it's another word for it, times one's va valence, or the value that they place on it. So, one's motivation can be reduced if any of these start to suffer. So if I don't really think that I'm going to be able, if I exert a lot of effort that I'm going to be able to achieve some level of performance, I'm not going to have quite as much motivation. If I know that I can achieve something, but I still don't really think it's going to get me something I want, so I have low P to O ex expectancy, I'm going to have a little bit less of a uh, motivational force in that instance. Furthermore, if my the valence or the value I place on that outcome, if that's really low, if it's not something I care about, if the outcome is for example, getting praise from a supervisor, and I don't really care about that, then my motivation will be lower. So this is a very rational way to think about behavior and employee motivation at work. That's the assumption that we have, that people have a conscious, rational decision that they make about different alternatives at work. For managers, Expectancy theory has a number of implications. I think the best way to think about this is to think about it in terms of the different components of expectancy theory. So first, we can think about the E to P expectancy. And the objective here is really to try to increase the belief among employees that they're capable of performing the job successfully. Because if they don't think that they're going to be capable of performing successfully, they're not going to want to do it. They're not going to have the motivation. So for that, you might want to do things such as select people who have the skills and abilities and knowledge to do the job well, provide training that can help them in that regard, provide enough resources, assign simpler or fewer tasks until they can master them, maybe even provide examples of other employees who have done it well in the past, because if they can say, well, so this person was able to successfully perform, then they will have a higher level of belief that they can do it. And additionally, provide some coaching to help people become more confident in their own abilities. Secondly, we can think about the P to O expectancy. And again, the goal here is to increase the belief that good performance is going to get them some sort of outcome. So some things that managers can do along these lines are measure job performance accurately. They can also clearly explain outcomes so that people understand them. They can also describe how employees' rewards are based upon past performance. Maybe also provide examples of other employees whose very high levels of performance have resulted in higher rewards. So they can see that link a little bit better. And finally, when it comes to outcome valences, the goal here is to increase the expected value of those outcomes that result from desired performance. So some implications for managers are distribute rewards that people value, <laughs> which is rather interesting, uh, because oftentimes we assume that people value certain things. So tasty rewards, things that people value. Also, maybe thinking about individualizing rewards. One size doesn't necessarily fit all. And finally, minimize the presence of outcomes that might contradict other outcomes. So if people are getting um, a lot of pay for a certain type of performance, but at the same time, another outcome is that they're not getting any kind of recognition for their uh, efforts, that could be some sort of negative um, effect on their motivation. So making sure that there's consistency 
in the rewards that are being offered and those outcomes. Thank you very much for stopping by and have a great day.